Hi, folks. This is Dr. Rob Sivers, and um, I am the Carb Addiction Doc. But in the next, this video, in the next series, we're going to do little short videos on keto blood work. What do I look for and what can you get from me in from an interpretation perspective in terms of blood work? And the one thing I'll caution you, so many people say, oh, I'm an expert. Just give me the blood work. Just do my blood work. I want the test because they need an MD to draw the blood work. I know what to do. Bullshit, you do not. You don't know how to interpret this. And I don't care who you are. Most doctors don't know how to interpret your blood work. So please, please, please don't just connect with a doctor to get your blood work and make your own interpretations. You will be shooting yourself in the foot, in the foot, because there are two, two reasons why. Number one, healthcare has transitioned away from understanding diagnosis, understanding disease process, and has become more and more therapeutic. So most doctors are going to do blood work to throw a pill at a number. And they're only going to do blood work to interpret the numbers that they can throw medication at. None of them are going to say, okay, this number is abnormal. What's the disease process? What's happening over here? So I'm going to take you back to the diagnostic elements where numbers hang together. The second important thing is that all blood work, all the numbers integrate. None of these numbers stand alone by themselves. So if one number is abnormal, you may need to treat that one number, but it's more important to understand and treat the disease process that caused it. So we're going to break this down in the next few videos into different discrete things. And today what I'm going to talk about are the lipid numbers. How do I read the lipid numbers? What do I do when I get a lipid panel? And there's so many people out there getting NMRs and you've got to look at the fractions and you've got to look. Okay, you can look at all those numbers esoterically. Number one, there's no pill for them except for a statin and some of the bigger statins and now Vesepa or Vesepa. Or you can look at the biology, of course. And it doesn't matter whether your LDL is big and fluffy or small and dense. It doesn't matter. It is highly predictable exactly what's going to happen with your numbers based on what you eat and drink irrespective to a large extent of what your biology is. Sometimes the numbers are off because the doctor doesn't understand what's happening. And we see that with our veteran carnivores, for example. So let's look at the lipid numbers. What do I normally do? I normally just test a lipid panel. But I'm going to combine with that lipid panel just in terms of talking. We do a whole bunch of blood work. But I'm going to combine with that in today's discussion, hemoglobin A1c. Because why do we look at the lipids? The primary value of looking at your lipid production is to be able to interpret cardiovascular health. That's why we're looking at it. The reason we're drawing these blood numbers is to look at cardiovascular risk and cardiovascular inflammation and cardiovascular health. And cardiovascular inflammation does not come from fat. Fat is responding to it. So what are the markers? The first thing I'll tell you is that a simple lipid blood test for most people tells everything. Because not one number will be off. They'll be off in a variety of different things. And even if you drill down and do the NMR or the spectrometry or whatever it may be, it's not going to help you to fix the problem. It's not going to help you to fix it, folks. And I don't need blood work to tell me what I'm putting in my mouth. So let's break it down. Just do a simple, simple lipid panel. The first number we're going to look at is total cholesterol. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I don't look at total cholesterol. Irrelevant. Most doctors focus on, oh, total cholesterol is up. You need BS. Total cholesterol is a combination of all the different lipoproteins in your bloodstream. Ignore it. It's an irrelevant number. Who cares if it's high? Who cares if it's high? Let's break it down. The three most important numbers for me in terms of cardiovascular risk, the three markers of cardiovascular risk, triglycerides, HDL, A1C. Those are my three markers. What about your LDL? What if you're becoming fat adapted, your LDL has to go up. How high? I don't care. How many taxis are there on the road in New York? You know, the only time I get worried in New York is when there are no damn taxis on the road. So when your LDL is too low, that's like living in New York and not seeing a taxi. 
Something bad is happening when there are no taxis on, on the road in New York. And if it was coronavirus that put those taxis back in the garages, that's not a good thing. Just like it's not a good thing when a statin puts the taxis that are called LDL in the garage. I cannot think of a plausible reason to prescribe a statin. I'm struggling as I sit here to find a plausible reason to say this person should be on a statin because of what statins do and don't do. I really, I really, really, really cannot find a plausible reason to prescribe a statin for a patient. Now, I've asked this of so many of my colleagues. <laughs> and in my, my very descriptive home language, Heidacher sits at Metzei Beck Fultana. He sat there with his mouth full of teeth. Because that's the best response. Nobody's willing to say, no, don't prescribe a statin. But they all just sit there, blah, 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 blah. Well, maybe because of this reason, maybe. Be if you're going to work in the space, put it out there. And I cannot find a scientific reason, a plausible scientific reason, for someone to tolerate the side effects of a statin because of the benefit. I have yet, and, and in all the research I've looked at, every time I look at something, the answer is negative. So that's just in my practice. Now, I evaluate every person specifically. But my advice is not necessarily go on a stat. My advice is, if your numbers are off, look at the root cause. So let's look at those three numbers, because those are the important three numbers. Why are triglycerides important? Because free triglycerides in the bloodstream are typically representative of the conversion of extra sugar, extra sugar by the liver to triglycerides, and the flow of triglycerides from the liver to the fat cells and to your, the cells of your body where it gets used or stored. But it is a marker of chronic excessive carbohydrate production or consumption. That's why they're bad. Because remember, elevated sugar levels absolutely do damage the blood vascular system. And ex excess blood sugar is the primary cause of cardiovascular disease if you don't smoke. So you try triglycerides, and I use a number of 75. Ideally, I want my triglyceride count to be below 75 milligrams per deciliter. HDL. HDL is a lipoprotein that gets produced by the liver between meals. And HDL is indicative of low insulin. Uh, a high HDL level is indicative of low insulin, higher glucagon levels, which is what we want. It's an in indicator of insulin sensitivity. People do what? Oh, it goes out and scavenges cholesterol. No, it doesn't. It is a transfer molecule for bringing cholesterol back to the liver. It's also a transfer molecule for sending zip code addresses in the form of lipoproteins to LDL and to IDL to tell them which cells to go to. But the HDL number is important because it gets produced between meals. You produce VLDL during meals, very low density lipoprotein, and HDL between meals, only when you're insulin sensitive. So if you're insulin resistant, your HDL numbers are going to be very low. And when you're insulin sensitive, and remember the connection between vascular damage and sugar is far greater than the connection between lipids and vascular damage. So if your HDL is going to be high, it is an indicator of insulin sensitivity. And ideally, I want an HDL above 75. It's one of the slowest molecules to get there because insulin resistance takes a long time to go away. So I'm looking for an HDL above 75. And the next marker of vascular damage for me is not a lipid, it's, a, it's A1C, hemoglobin A1C. And ideally, I want that hemoglobin A1C below 5.2, at which number your blood sugar elevation is not great enough to cause significant vascular damage. Now, the lower you can get is not also good because you have to have sugar in your bloodstream. So ideally, I want that number between 4.7 and 5.2. Around 5 is ideal. I've seen them as low as 4, 4, 4, 5. I think that's a little bit too low. But a hemoglobin A1C below 5.2, a triglycerides below 75, and an HDL above 75, you do not have vascular injury from sugar. It's that simple. And almost everybody that achieves that number 
has a low CAC score. Now, if you've damaged your blood vessels from before, that CAC score, the coronary artery calcium score, is going to be bad. But most people that can achieve these numbers have a zero or a two, which is equivalent of zero. That's for a patient of mine that I saw. Oh, I'm very upset that my CAC score is two. Okay. Um, the point is, folks, that we do these numbers to look at risk. And risk does not come from LDL. LDL is a taxi that transports fat around the human body. And in a fat-adapted, healthy person, you want a lot of LDL. Expect your LDL to go up if you are healthy. So ideally, I want LDL between 120 and 300, and I'm fine with it being higher than that. I'm okay with your LDL being higher than that. If it's a lot higher than that, I want to know why, particularly in the context of triglyceride and HDL. But no one number stands in isolation. We've got to look at all those numbers together. But I worry when LDL levels get low. So understand your lipids. And if you want to know what your NMRs are and your fractionations, and from a science perspective, I love that stuff. I get off on that stuff. But in my practice where I'm treating patients, those numbers don't matter. They don't matter. These are just guides to assess risk and to push you to the appropriate diet. These are motivating numbers, not therapeutic numbers. And that's where we get lost in the weeds. Too many doctors are being too esoteric, even on, in my space, in the ketogenic space. Yes, the science is great to understand what's happening metabolically and biologically. But for Joe Blow, the patient, it's irrelevant. What is relevant is what's my current risk and how do I reduce that risk? That's what we work to do toward. That's what we measure. I hope this, this has been of, of value just talking about lipid numbers. The next series of numbers, we'll talk about the diabetes numbers. Then we'll talk about the thyroid numbers. And then we'll talk about some of the other blood work. Stay tuned. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If you want to set up a visit, text us 561-517-0642. And we always do the blood work with a caveat that let us look at this blood work with you. Because when you do your own interpretation, you get sucked in by the internet. That's not a good place to be. Because you don't know and the internet doesn't understand. There's some that do, but most don't. Don't be a victim. Don't be a nodal. Don't be a smartass. <laughs> See you next time.